then took our breath away. Faith so weak that we could barely
They were like prisons that we couldn't escape. But he came and he died and he rose. Those walls are rubble now. Remember those giants we called death and grave? They were like mountains that stood in our way. But he came and he died and he rose. Those giants are dead now. This is who he is, he loves us. This is our God, this is what he does, he saves us. He bore the cross, beat the grave, let heaven and earth proclaim. This is our God, King Jesus. Remember that fear that took our breath away.
This morning, Jesus, we bring you all the praise, honor, and glory that our hearts are capable of. We thank you that you are a resurrected king, that right now you are seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven. And it is our privilege and our joy this morning to pour out our praise to you. We just ask that you'd be with us in the rest of the service this morning. Just anoint Pastor Marco as he, he preaches the gospel message this morning. Lord, we love you, we worship you, we adore you, and it's in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, amen, amen. All right, at this time, if you take a moment, just greet the person next to you this morning. Church, happy Easter. It is so wonderful to be with all of you this morning. Thank you for joining us as we celebrate our resurrected King, King Jesus. My name is Marcus, and if you're new with us here this morning, thank you so much. Whether you're here by choice, by force, or, or coercion of lunch, uh, thank you for making Radiant Church a part of your Easter celebration. If that's you and you're looking for a church, or you're just feeling like the Lord is tugging on your heart this morning and you want to check us out again, we'd love to invite you back next Sunday. Our normal service times are 9.30 and 11.30 a.m. And next week, we actually start a brand new sermon series, which is a great time to jump back into church. You're kind of starting at the ground floor of a new message series. And we're also going to be celebrating baptisms during both of those services, which, yes, which is an awesome way to celebrate what the Lord is doing in specific individual lives here at Radiant Church. We're going to continue our worship this morning through, our, uh, through a time of giving and here at Radiant Church, one of our greatest desires is to be a generous church, to be a church known by its generosity. And it's because of your faithful and sacrificial generosity that we're able to make Jesus known in Bay City as it is in heaven. So I just want to thank you for that. And we got to remember that when we give this way, we're not only giving out of worship, we're actually reflecting God's image to others that are watching as well. So it's an act of service as well. So there's four ways that you can give. If you want to give today here in person, you can give at the giving station in the back of the sanctuary by the double doors. You can give online at radiantbc.com, which is probably our most efficient and easy way to give. You can mail a check to our P.O. box as well, or you can text any dollar amount to the number 84321 on your phone. Church, as we prepare our hearts for the rest of our service, would you join me as we pray? Father in heaven, we thank you so much that Sunday came that the story didn't end on Good Friday, Lord, that it was, it was made new on Easter Sunday, on Resurrection Sunday. As Paul says, Lord, without the resurrection, our faith would be futile and we'd still be in our sins. But praise be to God that King Jesus was enthroned on the cross and crowned in, with thorns and took our sin and rose from the grave again. And today we celebrate that. Lord Jesus, we love you, we thank you, and it's in your name that we pray. Amen. morning church and happy Easter everyone. He is risen. Come on. Amen. Amen. Hey, it's so good to be with all of you this Easter morning. If you're new with us, my name is Marco and I am the lead pastor here. Welcome to Radiant Church. We are so honored that you would be our guests and celebrate some of your Easter with us. And really here at Radiant Church, our greatest prayer is that you would just have a life-altering encounter with Jesus himself. And if you meet Jesus today, listen, that is the greatest honor of your life that will transform your life. That is our greatest prayer for you today. And so we hope that you will meet him, see him, love him, uh, know him today here at Radiant Church. 
Well, listen, um, I want to just ask you a, a quick question here. Did anyone by chance get a chance to attend the Easter Immersion Experience yesterday? Yeah, a few of you. Yeah, awesome. Listen, I just want to just give honor to where honor is due. Pastor Sarah and her team. Can we just clap our hands for those guys? <clears throat> They literally put hours upon hours upon hours of work into making that event happen. And so we're so grateful for all of their efforts, all of their work that they put into it. We're so thankful for the work that God did in and through that event. And to all of you who attended as well, thank you for uh, spending part of your Saturday with us yesterday. Well, listen, today, Radiant Church, I have the privilege to talk to you about Jesus. Hallelujah, someone said, who he is, what he's done, right, and what difference that should make in our lives. Now, let me just say this, that question, who is Jesus, is actually the most important question to ever be asked. And how you answer and respond to that question can radically transform your life. And today, a holiday, of course, Easter. Today's a day that here at the church we get many, many visitors. A lot of you are probably here. It's maybe your, your first time. Maybe you haven't been here in maybe six to nine months or so. And I, I never want to assume that we're all on the same page when it comes to Jesus. And so I'd love to just take the next several moments to really just give you a brief history of this man that we call Jesus, because I recognize that here among us, we have some believers, of course, but we also have some skeptics. And here this morning in attendance, we have some faithful followers of Jesus, but we also have some cynics among us. So if you would bear with me, I'd love to just give you a brief history of the man that we know as Jesus. Jesus was born in a small town. It was the town of Bethlehem, according to Luke chapter 2, verse 4. Located in the region of Judea in ancient Israel, he was born to an unmarried teen mother, roughly around 2,000 years ago. Now listen, Jesus is known as the founder of Christianity, and his name literally means Yahweh saves. Now that name Yahweh is actually the personal name of God. According to the New Testament, Jesus is the creator and the savior of the whole world. He's known as the Messiah, fulfilling all of God's promises of the Old Testament. He was adopted by Joseph, who was a simple carpenter, and he spent the first 30 years of his life in obscurity. Now, around the age of 30, Jesus actually began his public ministry. And that's when he began to preach the gospel. He began to heal the sick, to cast out demons. He uh, fed the poor. He befriended the marginalized and those who were uh, really destitute in society, those whom the religious rulers of that day overlooked. And Jesus' ministry was only three short years before he was put to death on a Roman cross, declaring himself to be God. Now, in those three short years, Jesus absolutely transformed the world. Now, here's the good news. He's still transforming the world today. Jesus has made such a profound impact on our world, listen to this, that over a billion people today claim to know him as Lord and Savior. Our two biggest holidays are focused on Jesus. So during Christmas, of course, we celebrate the birth of our Savior, the birth of Jesus. And during Easter, which is today, we remember we celebrate his resurrection from the dead. More songs have been sung to Jesus. More pictures painted portraying him more books written about him, more lives devoted to him than any other person on the planet who has ever lived. Our calendar is even based around this man, Jesus. B.C., of course, meaning before Christ, and A.D., Anno Domini, meaning the year of our Lord. 
But this morning, instead of listening to all the things that could be said about Jesus, here's what I want to do. I want you to hear from Jesus himself. And so this morning, I want to just present to you seven statements from the New Testament. These are seven statements known as the seven I am statements from Jesus in the Gospel of John. Now, here's why these are such a big deal. In Judaism, this I am statement is unquestionably understood as a name for God. And whenever Jesus used this I am statement, he was claiming to be God himself, which is a very big deal because Buddha did not claim to be God. Krishna did not claim to be God. Muhammad never claimed to be God. But Jesus claimed to be God because he is. So let me just begin with I am statement number one. It comes from John chapter 6, verse 35. It says this, Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. I am the bread of life. Jesus actually even says that he's the bread that comes down from heaven in verse number 41. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I love bread. Anybody else love bread in this room? Man, I love bread. I love ciabatta bread. I love sourdough. I love naan bread. I love, you know, French bread. I love all the breads, right? And I especially love it when some of you are getting a little bit too happy right now. <laughs> I especially love it when you ever go to Lucky's or you ever go to a restaurant and they bring you out that hot bread. Ooh. That hot bread with the butter and the oil. Some of you can taste it. You're already looking at your watch. Like, when's the preacher man going to be over? Because I want to get some of that hot bread. Listen, we love bread. I want you to just keep that in your mind for just a few moments, right? That's the idea, is that we all love bread. And we all understand that bread has been a staple of the human diet for as long as we know and understand this, especially in ancient history. But what Jesus is trying to communicate to all of us today is this. Jesus is emphasizing that he is the only source of spiritual sustenance and eternal satisfaction for those who believe in him. And that ultimately, every human being on the planet is looking for this very thing, for sustenance and spiritual nourishment. So let me just ask you a few quick questions, and don't worry, because you don't have to answer out loud. But do you feel like there's an emptiness in your soul today? Do you feel as if your life lacks purpose? Have you tried everything under the sun, everything that the world has had to offer you, only to end up disillusioned, dissatisfied, okay, and just unfulfilled in life as a whole? Thomas Aquinas, a philosopher, once said this, There is within every soul a thirst for happiness and meaning. Friends, you can have all the money in the world. You can have all the wealth. You can have all the riches. You can have all the relationships in the world. You can have all the drugs that money can buy, all the alcohol, everything that you can imagine at your fingertips and still end up in life unsatisfied unfulfilled, unhappy. And I want you to know this morning that, listen, if you want spiritual nourishment and sustenance, you will not find it in anyone else except Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The next I am statement comes from John 8, 8 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus says that he is the light of the world. Have you ever stumbled around a dark room? It's no fun, right? A few months ago, I told this story to our church. There was this winter storm on a Friday evening, and I was coming home. I was driving, and right in the middle of my drive home, there was a complete blackout lost power throughout the neighborhood, and I found it unusually difficult to make my way home without any stop signs or traffic lights or street lights. 
And how many of you know this can be a little bit like what life feels like for all of us? It feels like we're stumbling around, like we're groping around, like we just cannot find our way. It feels like we have no purpose. Here's what we know that light does. Light does at least two things. Light gives life, right? If you want a plant to live, of course, you have to give it water, but you have to expose it to the sunlight. And then number two, here's what light does. Light exposes and reveals. Light exposes and reveals. Now, in the same way, Jesus gives life, but he also exposes the areas of our lives that fall short of his glory, and we call these areas sin. This is the reason why Jesus is so offensive to so many people, because Jesus reveals that Jesus exposes the areas of our lives, friends, that we would like to remain hidden in the darkness, But here's what I want you to know, that Jesus doesn't expose and reveal your sins so that he can condemn you. Jesus exposes your sins so that you can turn from it and turn to him, the true light of the world. If you feel today as if you've lost your way in life, church, Jesus is the light of men. Today, listen, if you feel like the Holy Spirit is is touching your heart. If there's any part of the service that you feel like God is trying to get a hold of your attention, don't remain in hiding. Don't remain in darkness. Come to the light. Let Yes, have your sins exposed and revealed, but turn from them and turn to Jesus, who is the light of the world. The third statement is found in John 10, verse 7 through 9. It says this, Therefore, Jesus said again, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. Here in this I am statement, it stresses that no one can enter the kingdom of heaven by any other means than Christ himself. Jesus' words in this passage are couched in the imagery of, uh, of a sheepfold. He's the only way to enter in the fold. And that this metaphor of finding pasture is essentially just another way to say this, to say finding sustenance, satisfaction, fulfillment in God's provision and care. Listen, You don't have to wander around life as a restless wanderer. You can find pasture today in Christ, but you must enter in through him because he's the door, he's the gate, he's the only way. The fourth statement comes from John 10, verse 11. Many of you may be familiar with this one. Jesus says this, I am the good shepherd The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. So Jesus is the good shepherd. And first, here's what Jesus is doing. Jesus is making a distinction between himself and the religious rulers of that day. You see, the religious rulers of that day had had no regard, had no care for God's people. And Jesus is saying, I'm not like them. I'm different. I will care for your soul. I am a good shepherd. He is that good shepherd to lead and guide us. Now, some of you, I understand that you might be new to the Bible, and if that's the case, that's okay. But in the Bible, oftentimes, it refers to the people of God, the people who love God, the people who follow God, as sheep. Now, what do we know about sheep? Well, they're they're not very smart, they're pretty dumb, and they often find themselves in harm's way. And so sheep need a shepherd. Sheep need a shepherd to lead and guide them through their journey of life. And listen, we are the same way. We need a good shepherd to lead and guide us through our lives. The biggest mistake that we have made, listen, is excluding God from our lives, pridefully or believing that we can manage on our own. But we cannot. We need a good shepherd. We cannot manage without him. Second, Jesus says this, that he lays down his life for the sheep. This is pointing to Jesus' sacrificial death on the cross 
to redeem and save those who trust in him. And I want to be clear this morning, church. Jesus is not just simply a good example of how we love people. Jesus actually, through his death, saves sinners like you and me. Jesus did not die as a martyr killed by men. He died as a substitute, willingly laying down his life for each of us. I often say it like this to the church, that Jesus lived a life that we could not live, that was a life that was without sin, but he died the death that we all deserved, and that was death on a cross. Jesus is our substitute. Jesus is our good shepherd. Jesus was the perfect sacrifice. Jesus is the spotless lamb of God. The fifth I am statement comes from John 14, verses 5 and 6. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. These are bold words from Jesus. Jesus says he is the only way to the Father. And I know this is somewhat of a controversial statement in today's culture. But listen, friends, I must tell you the truth, that Jesus is the only way to heaven. Listen, there are not multiple ways. Jesus never said that he was a way. He said he is the way. All spiritualities do not lead to heaven. All gods are not real gods. All forms of faith are not the true faith. There is only one God, and his name is Jesus. And Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There are not multiple truths. There is one truth, and that truth is embodied in Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And my prayer for you this morning is that some of you today would believe and surrender your hearts and your lives to him. There's no such thing as my truth or your truth. There's one truth, and that is Jesus. The sixth statement comes from John 15, verse number one. It says this, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. In this statement, Jesus says that we are the branches and he is the vine. And just like a branch cannot bear fruit unless it is joined in vital union with the vine, only those who are joined to Christ can receive their power from him and produce fruit in a Christian life. If you want a life that bears fruit, listen, you must be connected to Jesus. If you want a life that is flourishing you must be connected to Jesus. If you want a life that brings you joy, you must be connected to Jesus. If you want a life that brings purpose, you must be connected to the vine, which is Jesus himself. The final I am statement is a fitting way to end our time today. It comes from John chapter 11. Verse number 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Jesus said that he was the resurrection and the life. Jesus has the power to resurrect the dead. He raised Lazarus from the dead because only Jesus holds the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Only Jesus conquered death. Only Jesus can resurrect a life because he is the resurrection and the life. Jesus lived a sinless life. He was crucified at the hands of Pontius Pilate. But three days later, he rose from the grave proving to be everything that he said he was. The resurrection of Jesus, listen, is such a big deal that if it's true, listen, following Jesus is the, the most important decision of your life that you'll ever make. It's more important than the person that you'll marry. 
It's more important than the career that you'll choose. It's more important than the house and the neighborhood that you live in. Following Jesus, listen, if it's true that he rose from the grave, which we believe it is, listen, following him is the greatest and most important decision of your life. And today you can know him. Today you can follow him. Today you can be transformed by his love. Today we want to introduce you to the resurrection and the life, which is Jesus Christ. Now listen, church, I want to be clear. Jesus is not a man who became God, okay? He is God who became one of us in the flesh to save us. He is God in the flesh. He is alive today. He is victorious over death and hell. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the only hope for all of humanity. He is the most important person to ever walk the planet. And Jesus is coming back to this earth for his church. There's a question in the New Testament that Jesus asked one of his followers by the name of Peter. And some of you are familiar with this. Jesus asked Peter, who do you say I am? Who do you say I am? The question that Jesus asked Peter is the same question that he's asking all of you today. Who do you say he is? When we look at the New Testament, Jesus never claimed to just be a good teacher. Jesus never claimed to just be a prophet. Jesus never claimed to just be another religious ruler or figurehead. In the New Testament, in the Gospels, no, Jesus claimed to be God. God in the flesh. And if you believe that this morning, listen, it has the power to transform your life forever. Today you can have hope eternal. Today you can have life. Today you can know him. Today you can love him. Today you can be transformed by his love through faith in him. By turning away from your sin and coming to him. The Bible says this. The Bible says that we've all sinned. We've fallen short of the glory of God. But the Bible also says this, that the wages for our sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. You and I, we cannot work for our salvation. We cannot earn our salvation. Instead, we must receive it. We must receive forgiveness from him today. Did you know this? Did you know that every other religion tells us that there's something that we can do for our sin, that there's something that we must do because of our sin, but not so with Christianity. Jesus says this on the cross, it is finished. Today we must receive his love. You must receive his forgiveness. You must receive his grace. You must receive his mercy. By what? By turning away from your sin, by trusting in him totally and coming to him. You can receive that today. Today you can know God in a personal way and be saved through Jesus Christ. And so let me just ask you as we finish up our time. Will you receive Jesus today, friends? Will you receive his love and his forgiveness, or will you turn away from his grace? Will you turn away? Will you reject him? There's no middle ground. You must make a choice today, and I want you to choose Jesus. I want to pray with you here momentarily. If you just posture yourself actually in a posture of prayer, I want to pray with you And you can pray with me as well. We're going to come to God. We're going to ask for forgiveness. We're going to acknowledge that we're sinners. And we're going to receive Christ. Let's just do that right now. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for Jesus. We thank you that you sent your one and only son from heaven down to a rescue mission here on earth for us. 
God, today we confess that we sinned, that we have fallen short of your glory. God, today we confess that we need a Savior. We cannot save ourselves. We cannot work for our salvation. We cannot earn our way to heaven. But we need a Savior, and that Savior is Jesus. Jesus is the spotless Lamb. Jesus is the great I Am. Jesus is the one who saves. Jesus is the one who did not sin, and yet he died in our place. He was punished in our place so that we could receive forgiveness, mercy, life, and grace forever and eternal life. And so today, God, we receive forgiveness through the sacrifice of Jesus. We thank you that Jesus did not stay in the grave, but he rose three days later, proving to be everything he said he was, proving to be the matchless Son of God. And so we receive you today, Jesus. We receive new life. Come into my heart. Give me a fresh start. Make me new. We want to follow you today. And so, Lord, we thank you for the work that you're doing here at Radiant Church, God. And we thank you for new life made available only through Jesus Christ. And we pray this in his name. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. Let's clap our hands. Come on, would you stand up? We're going to continue to worship.
Cause there's nobody in the grave now One head gets to wear that crown Cause there's nobody in the grave now No enemy can hold you down Cause there's nobody in the grave now One head gets to wear that crown Cause there's nobody in the grave now No enemy can hold you down Today, if you made a decision for Christ, I want to just give you an opportunity to respond to that. Right in front of your seat, you have a connection card that you can fill out. Or if you want to, you can just scan the QR code behind me. We'd love to just be able to connect with you if you feel comfortable with that, to f help you along this journey with Jesus. And so we'll keep that up there for a few more moments. I want to pray with you, and then we'll dismiss. Lord, we thank you so much that you have conquered the grave God, that there is no body in the grave now, that you have risen, that you are alive, and that you will return for your church. Lord, thank you for today, the work that you've done in each of us, God. Thank you for those who have come to faith, who will take uh, action in following you, Lord. We pray that every person who makes that decision today, Lord, will be rooted and grounded in the local church, God. Lord, thank you for uh, the victory that we have in you. And we just give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Happy Easter, Radiant Church. God bless you guys.